Are you into 90s kart races? Are you into animals that can control planes, cars and hovercrafts? Or maybe you're just a big fan of helpful elephants? Whatever it is, I'm sure you're going to find something to love in today's showcase game, Diddy Kong Racing. Now I, like many of you, have logged a lot of hours in this game as a kid, however I never did the adventure mode, it was always just playing tracks and racing against a friend or a sibling. So I wanted to dive in and try the adventure mode now that I'm an adult and I have the time to waste on it. So this is going to be a really relaxed view at the adventure mode in Diddy Kong Racing. I'm going to tell you why you need to play it and why it's just a bunch of good wholesome fun. So we'll kick things off with the graphics and the music. I really, really do love the music in this game. Uh, David Wise, I believe is how you pronounce his name, did the music. It is superb. It is uh, thematic to all the different levels and it's just there's some absolute bops in here. I'm going to say it now. As for the graphics, there's nothing groundbreaking here, however, for the time and for the system this was released on, um, I think that the graphics are absolutely fantastic, they're cartoony, and to me they're iconic, uh, they just scream Diddy Kong Racing, and yeah, they just bring me good memories. Character selection is what it is, uh, I would have liked to have seen maybe a couple more female characters, but it was limited for the hardware again, and I think the characters that we got are interesting and fun. And the good thing is, is that different characters do affect the handling of vehicles differently, so there are different strategies you can use when you play. So moving on to the tracks, the tracks are broken up into four different regions starting with, so you've got Dino Domain, where the tracks are really dusty and uh, ancient feeling, there's dinosaurs around, and um, I think they really nailed the theme of this one. All the tracks within that um, sub-theme feel like they're in the same world, so I really do like the Dino Domain tracks. Snowflake Mountain, there is some challenging ones in here. Um, the ice that makes you bounce is such a bitch. Every time I hit that thing, I'm so, so mad. But yeah, Snowflake Mountain does have some really good tracks in it. I like Frosty Village, personal favorite of mine. Sherba Island, a very fun one. You got pirate ships, you got beaches, you got coves. It's really, really cool. Whale Bay being an absolute classic. I love Whale Bay, loved it as a kid. Next up, we got Dragon Forest, and uh, Dragon Forest for me was a little bit underwhelming. It felt a little bit generic um, nights, and it reminded me a lot of uh, Lego Races actually, that nights theme. I don't know, it felt a little bit generic. And then of course, spoiler alert, the fifth one you unlock is Future Funland. This sub, this sub world and all the tracks within it are really cool. They're different, they're wacky, they're out there. The final boss track within this sub world is so, so difficult. I swear it took me about 40 minutes, like I mentioned earlier. It is a pain. Within all these subworlds, you will find special challenges. They are fun to do. I think my favorite one has to be Fire Mountain. Um, undoubtedly, collecting the eggs and seeing them hatch, the little eyes that pop out, they look like they're hiding. Love it, love it. Now, just quickly staying on the track theme, there is bananas littered all over the tracks and you can use them to gain speed. So the more bananas you have, the quicker you will go. I never bothered with these. I found that they didn't really impact me too much. I may be wrong. Uh, they're probably experts of this game that say you need to have all the bananas and they're probably right. But I just didn't find that it was worth going out of my way to collect them during races. And finally, the items in this game are split into five categories. So you've got the yellow balloon, the rainbow, balloon green blue and red balloons um, the red balloons have like an attacking move so move an attacking item it's a rocket and then you can upgrade those twice so each move can be upgraded twice um, it is a good system i really do enjoy it stop calling them moves they're items um, i really do like the system and um, one tip that helped me a ton an absolute fucking ton is before you use a boost or before you go over a zipper pad, let go of the accelerator and you get an absolute monster boost out of it. And honestly, without that tip, I don't think I could have beaten some of these bosses. So moving on to the bosses, they are varied and they are interesting. There is a dragon, an octopus, a dinosaur, uh, a seal, and then of course the main boss, Whiz Pig. Spoiler alert, is a big walking pig from outer space. The boss race I referred to earlier with the downhill slope is this one against this bloody bow tie wearing walrus. 
This bastard had me on the ropes until I got this crocodile out and then I whooped his ass. Personally, I found the octopus and whiz pig to be almost as hard as each other even though whiz pig is late game and octopus is like way earlier. The octopus leaving the bubbles around, I just found it so difficult. But again, this was before I discovered the accelerator hack. If I had known that before, I think I would have beaten that bloody thing a lot quicker. Swear to god, he's so condescending as well. Better luck next time, kid. Fuck off. I think the most underwhelming out of all these is the dragon. Not only was he probably the easiest to beat, the design's just a little bit, I don't know, bland? That being said, the first boss is just a straight up triceratops, so <laughs> yeah. Now beating all of these bosses and challenges rewards you with amulets and trophies and things to collect. I'm not going to go into that too deeply. Uh, I'd really advise you to play this game, whether you play it on a real console or find other means. Um, yeah, I just think you need to play it. And um, if you haven't, of course, most of you may have. I'm late to the party on this one. Like I said, the adventure mode took me 20 something years to get around to. So, yeah, I'm just happy that I did play it um, because it was well worth it. And um, yeah, I think you should too. Now, the game's difficulty varies. Uh, the coin challenges can be a little bit difficult, but uh, if you just remember that speed boost trick and um, just be consistent. I know this game's supposed to be easy, and maybe some people do find it easy, but there were some times where I genuinely didn't know if I'd be able to finish the game. But I'm glad I did because this was a video I really wanted to make. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're going to play the game. And um, yeah, there's just lots to do. There's hidden balloons. There's uh, things to collect. And um, yeah, I just really enjoy it. The variation in vehicles keeps it interesting. And uh, it's not too long of a game to beat. You could beat the adventure in no time, really. I, I think it took me maybe... 10 hours? I don't know, roughly that. But you get to do it again. There is an adventure too, and I think everything's harder. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was just a casual look at Diddy Kong Racing, and I hope that you get the chance to play it. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and please subscribe. I'll be making more videos like this on older games, and of course videos on new games. Uh, yeah, I just want to make videos that I love, and this is one that I really wanted to do. So hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.